Ah, welcome back friends. Glad to see you again. I hope you still have enough snacks left over from the last time because we are delving into another famous Irish legend. In this episode, we will be covering the Puka, Ireland's most feared fairy. The name Puka is an Irish word which means goblin, but the actual origins is theorised to come from the Scandinavian word Puk, meaning nature spirit. The Puka is a shape-shifting trickster, most prominently seen as a dark horse with glowing yellow eyes and a long mane. In this form, the Puka will roam the rural countryside, tearing down fences, scattering livestock, and destroying crops, generally being a nuisance and doing damage where it goes. This variation of the legend could have its origins from the early worshippers of Epona, who was the goddess and protector of horses. These worshippers used to meet on top of hills and high ground, which is one of the areas where the puka was meant to be seen. In different parts of Ireland, different variations of the creature appears. For example, in County Down, the description of the puka is a small goblin who comes at the end of harvest time and demands a share. Traditionally, for this reason, farmers would leave out a portion of the yield from their harvest called the puka's share. Another example is in County Leo, the puka appears as a boogeyman creature whose only goal seems to be terrifying those walking late at night as the puka will pick them up on their back and throw them into ditches or bogs. The puka is also capable of human speech, no matter the form it's chosen to appear as. A story suggests that the puka may stop in front of a house of its choosing and call out the name of a person it wishes to take out on a journey. If that person should refuse, however, the puka will vandalise their property. The puka, however, was not always dangerous and could provide assistance and help at times. However, this appears to be on a very rare occasion. In the writings of the folklorist Douglas Hyde, he refers to a plump, sleek and terrible steed which appeared on a hill in Leinster every November, who spoke in a human voice and who spoke to the villagers who came to it given advice and prophecy for the year ahead, and in return received gifts and offerings. This isn't even a unique story, as it's also rumoured to have occurred in other parts of Ireland. In County Fermanagh, it was tradition on Bilberry Sunday to seek out the puka in the hillsides while collecting bilberries and socialising. Apparently, this tradition continued until the turn of the 20th century. Arguably the most famous legend that is attributed to the Puka is that of the High King of Ireland, Brian Boru, who ruled from 941 CE to 1014 CE, the only man who was able to ride a Puka. Using a specially made bridle which contained three hairs from the Puka's tail, the High King managed to control the Puka until it became exhausted and collapsed. The Puka surrendered and gave the king two promises. The first, it would no longer torment the Christian people of Ireland. And second, it would never again attack an Irishman, unless he was committing a crime, or had intent on committing a crime, or if he was just drunk. And then it was a free for all and the puka was allowed to go nuts. The legend of the puka has had a lot of influence in pop culture right up to this day. My personal favourite example is from Donnie Darko, a much darker interpretation where the puka takes the form of a man in an unnerving rabbit costume, who initially helps the main character but soon influences him into committing crimes. I won't go into detail about this movie to seem spoilers, but if you haven't already seen it, I highly recommend it. I think it's safe to say that the puka is cemented into Irish folklore. 
and there are of course many variations from different countries, each with their own legends and stories, an example being the Scottish Kelpies, a much more insidious water spirit, famous for the stories of them dragging children into rivers to drown them. I think this is one of the things that makes folklore such an interesting subject. There's unending variation in stories and figures. Maybe in the future I'll talk about other country stories, but in the meantime, I think it's time to bookmark this chapter of folklore. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. I hope to see you soon for the next one. Happy spooky season.